Run was always in the other classic Catholic school, St. Pascal Balon in Queens, New York. So to make a long story short, how I met Run, I would always see him. I didn't know him. I would always see Joseph Simmons. Hey, Daryl McDaniels. But in eighth grade, this dude named David McEachern, he was like seven feet tall. He probably wasn't that tall, but we little elementary school kids. Sure. So David McEachern came to the school in, in the last year, and he dunked on the one basketball rim that we had in the schoolyard, and he broke it. So now after the school, the little Catholic school kids ain't got nowhere to play basketball. But hold up. My father, boyfriend, and my mother, Banner, they dope. They put a basketball rim in my backyard. So we would leave school. Instead of playing in the basketball in the schoolyard, we would Probably go to my house it, yeah. and play ball. And then one particular day, it was only Joseph Simmons that came over to play ball. Um, we played ball. And when I was little, you know the rules. You can't have no company sure. when nobody's home. But mm -hmm. this particular day was only Joe. I let him in the house to get water. And he came into my house and he seen me and my brother's turntables, our DJ setup and stuff like that. And he was like, yo, you do this DJ thing? And I said, no, because I was still in a, my comic books, whatever, whatever. But to make a long story short, we started playing basketball for a shorter time. And we would go in the basement and DJ on the turntables before my mother and father came home. And one day he found the rhymes that I was just writing. I was just writing just because writing rhymes for me, well, I was a shy little kid. Mm -hmm. Like over 30 years in the, this music business, I learned to be more outgoing. Sure. But I was just writing. When I, I heard Grandmaster Flashes. No, here's what happened. I heard a, a cassette tape of Grandmaster Flash mixing Super Sperm. Super Sperm. Right. Super Spurn doing it, you know, the quick mix. So mm -hmm. me and my brother brought turntables to be like, to just to be like those Yo, DJs. You bought them, didn't you sell comic books to get the turntables? Yes, that's a great question, yeah. Uh, me and my brother, when, when, when hip-hop came to Queens, everybody wanted to be like the DJs and the MCs sure. and the break dancers and the graffiti writers. So you had to have a little money to buy records and turntables and equipment and speakers. Even if you were just buying the speakers and building your own speakers by cutting the wood and all that, you needed money. Me and my brother, we had a problem. We wasn't selling weed, yeah. so we was broke as hell. But we had a huge comic book um, collection. So we did a comic book sale, brought two turntables and a mixer. So now we in. So Ron comes over to my house and sees that. And prior to him seeing that, I wanted to be a DJ, and I was just writing rhymes because the rhyme thing went with the DJ thing. So make a long story short. Grandmaster Get High. Yeah, I was Grandmaster Get High in the basement by myself. It was all imagination, though. It was all make-believe. I was pretending to be like Grandmaster Flash. That, but that's how you came up with the name? Well, you can't be a biter. And before I Never that. You can't be a copycat. Neither. Well, now you can. Before you couldn't. Yeah, it's legal now. Now it's cool to copycat. Yeah, because everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody mumbling. Everybody but, uh, got right. red dreads. Everybody, uh, nobody exactly. re got respect. Everybody using the same beats and yeah. s just same the same flow. styles. Yeah, yeah exactly, nobody's exactly. stepping out. Right, nothing's original anymore. Yeah, they scared. Yeah, the first guy was original. The first guy to mumble and do that was the first guy. <laughs> He's supposed to be the only dude right. now in the midst of everybody doing that, and it's supposed to be unique. But to make a long story short, um, so, I was, you got to, so your Grandmaster I was, Get High. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you needed a DJ name. and mm -hmm. I, So I was Grandmaster Get High, and I was DJing because I heard Flash to Super Sperm. Mm -hmm. Like I told you before we started this interview, my brother brought rappers in light home, they didn't care. But then he brought Super Rapping home. And that made me say, okay, the thing that the... Because remember, Rappers in Light was just the guys rapping. Sure. So I had discovered Flash, and then... Grandmaster Flash and the Soda Five guys do the rap super. Hold on, the five. This is me as a little kid. The five guys do the rappers delight thing to Grandmaster Flash DJ. Yes. So I was Grandmaster Get High, and I was just writing my rhymes. My other persona, my other alter ego, was Easy D because mm. my name is Daryl. Starts with a D, and it's easy for me to write rhymes. So I was just writing a bunch of rhymes. Run discovered my rhyme book and looked at me. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a kid. I'm, I'm trying to figure out school. I'm reading my comic books. But he looked at me and said, when Russell lets me make a record, I'm putting you in my group. And I, I'll never forget the day that he said that to me. Because I looked at him and it was like he was talking another language. I was yeah. like, what the fuck did this dude just say to me? And make a long story short, 
I went to ninth grade. I went to a completely different high school than Running Jay. Running Jay went to Andrew Jackson in Queens. Mm-hmm. Ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade. The phone rings. It's, it's Joe. Yo, remember four years ago I told you whenever Russell let me make this record, I'm like, yeah. He says, grab your round books. We go in the studio. We went to the studio, made us like that, and that's the way it is. Did you write his rhymes too? I feel like that's why he wanted you. No, no, no. He wanted I that wrote book. the majority of yeah, the rhymes. Exactly. Like right, I right, said. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was, okay. I was the, I, I was the mastermind. Yeah. No, but wait, wait. I, I wrote everything because my whole thing was, I was, I, I was writing rhymes. If you listen to, um. Jam Master J's song, which okay. was the, the B side of Hard Times. Mm-hmm. Um, I never knew. That's why I always watch what I say, because I never knew what I was writing was going to come true. It was all make believe. It was me pretending. Like I was a little kid, I used to put my blanket on my neck with my safety pin and run through the house like I was Batman and Superman. And my mother would be, oh, boy, if you don't stop jumping in this house, I'm going upside your head. But I'd be like, Mommy, you don't understand. I'm Batman. I'm Superman. Not in this house. You know what I'm saying? So I was just make believing I was Flash, Furious Five, Cold Crush Four, Funky Four Plus sure. One More, Treacherous Street. The those, people you idolized. Those were the, yeah, in the Zulu Nation. And um, when I started writing my rhymes, um, I said this rhyme, where live as can be, never singing the blues, got to tell y'all all the good news. The good news is that there is a crew, not five, not four, not three, just two. Two MCs who are claiming the fame and all other things won't be the same because it's about time for a brand new group. Run DMC to put you up on the scoop. That was my make-believe battle rhyme of me battling the Furious Five, Cold Crush Four, and Treacherous Street by myself. <laughs> So I'm in the basement writing all of this. I'm the king of rock. All my rhymes were just me pretending and make believing I was doing that for real. And you manifested it, it without even world, knowing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So now when I go to kids and speak at, I used to just speak in high schools. Now I go to middle schools and sure. speak. And I tell kids, if anybody ever tease you about doing that make believe stuff, I mean, it might be bad advice for a middle school kid, but I said, if, if these bullies ever try to tease you, you into that corny make-believe stuff. You stand up on your desk in the middle of class. I know the teacher's going to say, what the hell? And you beat your chest like you're King Kong, mm. and you say, you goddamn right I do this make-believe. Because think about the word make-believe, make-believe, make them believe. I'm pretending I'm the microphone master. I'm the pretending I'm the devastating mic controller. I'm pretending I'm this king of rock dude. And now when I walk the earth, people call me what? Yo, king, what's up? So for me, I was just pretending to be as dope as I became and it manifested. Yeah. So going back to the eagle thing, I, even at the height of my career, I always loved everybody besides me. I loved Cold Crush 4. I loved P.E. more than me. Big Daddy Kane, mm. Eric B. and Rakim. I loved them because I, I never took time out to say, oh, shit, I'm in this position doing it. 